Was he going to make a borrow sword as well? Wow. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. And the hand shake, and there he goes. Well, oh Prank Kids won. I'm done. Fuck this. What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you an updated meta analysis for the December 2018 format. YCS Milan has just come to a close and oh man, we have a lot to talk about because now that we have Firewall banned, there has been so much crazy shit happening. Some things haven't changed, but YCS Milan was just great. And so we're gonna go ahead and dive right into that. But before we do, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single upload. And if you really love the content that I produce on this channel, then consider supporting me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member because it's thanks to people like Max that I'm able to bring you this content on a daily basis. So if you're interested, hit the join button down below or check out the links in the description. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So here is the pie chart for the top 32 breakdown of YCS Milan. Now YCS Milan had over 1,700 competitors, making it, I believe, the third largest YCS in all of European YCS history. So that is fantastic. I think one of the craziest things to me is that even though people just have more and more disdain for the game because of the way that Konami decides to do things, maybe like not ban certain FD or certain cards or whatever, the player count keeps going up. So I think that's kind of a good thing, right? So imagine what it would be like if everything was healthy, but I guess that might be a little bit too optimistic. Getting back to the pie chart though, this is really cool because I wanted to talk about this in comparison to my thoughts going into the new format prior to YCS Milan taking place. I did a meta analysis already, so we're going to be jumping back and forth between those two pie charts to kind of compare my initial thoughts to what actually ended Ended up happening. But starting off, we had Sky Striker. Really should be no surprise that Sky Striker had the most representation. A lot of people were assuming that it would. It ended up taking 12 of the top 32 slots, which is about 37%. And I was putting Sky Striker at being at about 35 to 40% of the entire top cut, or just kind of like the overall field in my previous meta analysis. So I was actually kind of right on that. And that kind of makes sense because when you look at Sky Striker, it is just the best deck. I mean, it's not like completely completely outclassing everything else, but the power level that the deck has, the deck's ability to just adapt and really play all these different hand traps for the FTK decks, and then also being able to outgrind all the slower decks, and then you've got tools to just turn up the aggro, like Boral Sword Dragon. Like, the deck just has everything, and because it's very consistent, it has the, the ability to pretty much access whatever tools it needs to, that kind of just puts Sky Striker in a prime position. Now, it also kind of puts Sky Striker in a prime position to get hit on the next ban list, which we should should be getting in January, maybe early February around the release of Savage Strike, but that's something that you just have to keep in mind that Sky Striker will probably be on top for the next couple of months. So for the next piece of the pie chart, we have Thunder Dragons. Now, in my prior meta analysis, I had Thunder Dragon taking up about, I'd say like 20% of the metagame, maybe like 15%, but it actually surpassed that. It took up 25% of the top cut slots, about 8 and 32, and that's really good. A lot of people were also assuming there was going to be a lot of Thunder Dragon, but I don't think people anticipated there was going to be this much Thunder Dragon. I do know that there was players assuming that Thunder Dragon might be the best deck of the format, you know, and that's, you know, perfectly fine, but I think Thunder Dragon definitely surpassed a lot of people's expectations, not only in top cut representation, but I think in terms of overall representation as well, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, Thunder Dragon's still an incredibly powerful deck. You have all your tools at your disposal. It probably has the best matchup against Sky Striker, so it kind Kind of makes sense that since it has the best matchup against the best deck, it would have the second highest representation, right? So that's pretty good. And then overall, just because it's able to just pump out really high attack monsters that also happen to stun your opponent and can pop cards on their field, it kind of just brings the power level of all these other decks down because since it has these stun tools built into the archetype and you're not having to hope to like hard draw them like you would like a floodgate in a traditional stun type deck, that puts Thunder Dragon in a pretty solid position. Now again, so 
similar to Sky Striker, it might be a prime target to get hit on the next ban list because on the previous ban list, it didn't get touched whatsoever. So we'll just have to wait and see. But again, Thunder Dragon taking a pretty solid second place. Now this brings us on to Altergeist. Altergeist took up the third most representation in Top Cut, but it really didn't take up that many slots. I think it only took up like three, which is only like 10% of the top cut. And I know Altergeist had a much higher representation maybe in the overall field, but Altergeist really underperformed for this event. I had a little bit of higher expectation, and I think a lot of other people did too, just because of creating the specific triangle meta of Sky Striker, Thunder Dragon, Altergeist. You know, it kind of just makes sense, but when you look at the amount of diversity in this pie chart, I kind of like this, and yeah, you know, Sky Striker's taking up a very significant portion of the top cut, but there's like 10 different decks in this top cut, and I think that's really, really cool. Not to mention, even though Sky Striker is the strongest deck, or at least the most represented, it didn't win the event, and it also didn't even get second place. So that's also something to keep in mind, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. Now, one of the big things I want to talk about is Dark Warrior, because Dark Warrior suffered the most hits on this ban list, having Firewall go to zero, Armageddon Knight go to one, and Destiny Hero Malicious go to two. So we didn't exactly know the fate of Dark Warrior at this point, and YCS Milan has shown that the deck is definitely still playable. And this is basically due in part to Neo Space Connector, because Neo Space Connector kind of helps tie the deck all back together. You know, you can Gumblar loop your opponent for six. There's also the Rongo uh, mini ad version that's able to just completely just lock your opponent out from being able to really do anything because if they can't normal summon, they can't special summon, and they're basically in fear of their board just getting wiped if they play any cards. Yeah, that's not exactly really fun or interactive, but that's kind of how this Dark Warrior deck works. Hitting these cards really did not do enough, and a lot of players are kind of frustrated at the fact that these decks are still in the meta, but but it's not nearly as bad as it was before, so I think that's definitely a good thing. One of the breakout decks, though, of this event was Slash Draw FTK. Now, this is essentially the Danger FTK deck, but instead of playing cards like Cannon Soldier and Graffa and looping the Cannon Soldier a million times just to burn your opponent's life points down to zero, this deck takes advantage of Slash Draw. And what you do is you basically summon out all your dangers, you make multiple copies of Sir You Just Skull Dread, you're gonna stack copies of Slash Draw in your deck, at the bottom of your deck specifically with Saryuja's effect, then by using one copy of Slash Draw and having an entire field, you're going to give your opponent a monster at some point, either with Grinder Golem or using Summon Sorceress's effect. Now your opponent controls a monster so you can resolve the Slash Draw, and you're basically going to blow up the entire board and your opponent takes 2,000 damage for each card destroyed. So it's essentially the exact same FDK, but you just have to do it in a slightly different way. But this was also a very strong deck for the event because hand traps were not nearly as prevalent as they were prior because people were under the assumption that the FTK decks were on the decline. And while that may be true, that gave the advantage for a deck like this to come out in full force. And a lot of the top players were playing it. It didn't make a lot of spots in the top cut. And I don't know how potent the deck's going to be moving forward, but it's definitely a really cool deck, especially if you like playing dangers. Definitely something worth checking out if that's something that you're into. Beyond that, though, there's so many other decks that made it into the top cut of this event. I mean, there's Gem Knight FDK. Gem Knight FDK didn't suffer any hits from the ban list because it was an FDK that didn't take advantage of Firewall. And again, with Call by the Grave going back to three, very similar to the other combo and FDK decks, this gave the deck a little bit of a boost, actually. And the deck can play through multiple hand traps. And since people weren't playing as many hand traps, it kind of gave way for this FDK to do very well. There was also a Trickstar deck in top cut, a True Draco deck in top cut. We haven't seen that deck in a while. And then there was the star of the show sitting in the other category, Prank Kids. Prank Kids managed to win YCS Milan. Now, I might do an entire video dedicated to Prank Kids just because there's a lot to talk about with them, and I really don't want to have this video be more than like 20 minutes, but Prank Kids won YCS Milan. Just think about that. This is one of those instances where you have to take it with a grain of salt because I feel that although Prank Kids won, I'm not taking any credit away from the player who played it, I think this is a deck that is not going to be good moving forward. And there's several reasons for that. First off, no one knows what the Prank Kids cards do. I would say like probably 95% 
90% of the people who were at YCS Milan had no idea what any of these cards did, which means the player piloting the deck had a very good advantage because not only did he know what everything his deck did, but he basically knew everything that was in the metagame and what their opponents were capable of doing. So that gives you a very strong advantage and having that mentality basically means that your opponent's not going to know how to play around anything and they're going to be misplaying a lot against your deck. Second off, no one is going to know how to side deck against your deck. So going into games two and three, again, this is where you have the opportunity to basically just adapt your deck to whatever matchup you're playing and have some silver bullet cards that might just be able to automatically win the matchup. And if you're going up against the deck and you have no fucking clue what the deck does, it's a little bit hard to side deck against it. Now, obviously, when you're playing the deck game one, you can kind of like start to understand certain things. Maybe you can identify it, but it's a lot different than preparing for a tournament for weeks if not months coming up against a deck that just came out of nowhere because it's only been legal for a few weeks and trying your best to go up against it. So having nothing for it in the side deck, because I think there are some key cards with prank kids that if you have them in your side deck or even your main deck, that deck is just going to completely fall apart. Now that prank kids are on the radar, there's going to be some players who want to play the deck and that's perfectly fine. But just know that if you want to play prank kids moving forward, this is going to be a deck that a lot of people are going to prepare for solely because it won the YCS. Now, I think over time, the deck's going to fade out. I think you're going to see it at the regional level for sure, but I think at the YCS level, players are going to stop, like, they're going to prepare for it, but then it's subtly just going to fall out of favor, and players aren't really going to care about it too much, or they're going to side cards that also have utility against the prank kids, but are also good against other decks like Sky Striker, uh, Thunder Dragon, and your Altergeist matchups, because those are going to be the main decks you're going to be seeing, in addition to Dark Warrior and, you know, Danger and stuff like that. But, you know, for what it's worth, that's fantastic that Prank Kids won. I always root for the underdog. I think that's really cool. And in addition to that, though, there was also like a Pendulum player and I think a Goki deck that rounded off the top 32. But overall, YCS Milan was really awesome. I love seeing this much diversity in a top cut, even though Sky Striker took up a majority of it. It's still cool to see like 10 different decks make it in the top cut. I think that's really nice that even though there are decks that are stronger than others, you can play a wide variety of different decks at the moment and it goes to show that you can top with any of them and even win with something like prank kids so guys those are just my thoughts let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this meta analysis and what you thought about ycs milan overall i'd really love to hear your thoughts so guys thank you so much for watching the video be sure to like the video as always subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content and if you found this video helpful then consider supporting me on patreon or becoming a youtube channel member because just by showing your support in any way that you can you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh content so thanks so much again and we'll see you next time One, two, three,